Nationals backbencher Darren Chester has confirmed he's taking a break from his party over his growing frustrations with the leadership. And he joins us now from Mallacoota in Victoria. Darren Chester, good morning to you. Good morning, Michael, and condolences for your Bulldogs. They had a real crack, but I think you know, the Demons just too good and great for those Demons fans if the drought finally broken. Yeah, they were, they were too good indeed. Best team one of the night. So, Darren Chester, explain what do you mean by taking a break from the Nats? Well, basically, Michael, I've taken the view that through you know, sadness more than anything else, a bit of frustration, I, I admit, uh, there's probably time for you to take a break from the party room meetings and, and the organised activities and really focus on, on the issues here in my own community, particularly around the uh, recovery from the drought, the bushfires and, and also the coronavirus impacts. And I, I felt that I needed some time away uh, from some of my colleagues because, quite frankly, I was becoming um, increasingly... Uh, disappointed with some of their public commentary. Now, I strongly believe in the Nationals. I strongly believe that regional Australia needs a powerful voice in the parliament, but it needs to be a sensible voice. And I've become disappointed with some of the comments of a minority of my colleagues. I called them out publicly at the time. I, I raised my issues with them privately to no avail. And I've just felt disappointed that uh, there was no real support there to pull them into line and just to moderate their comments at a time when Australia is going through a really tough time to have some of the comments being made by my colleagues was really, um, you know, it was offensive to me, it was disrespectful to my communities and I, I felt that uh, I really need to take some time now just to reflect on what I might do in terms of my public life going forward. OK, now we're talking about the likes of George Christensen and, and Matt Canavan. George Christensen, I, I guess, in particular, uh, in response to his uh, often out there views on things, uh, Barnaby Joyce says, well, he can't gag his MPs, every MP has a right to speak. He's right, though, isn't he? Well, you're right, uh, Michael. Everyone uh, respects the freedom of speech here in Australia, but freedom of speech comes with certain responsibilities as well. And as public figures, one of those responsibilities is not to inflame situations, not to spread misinformation. And I've been really frustrated by uh, comments at times, particularly during the, the lockdown uh, protests in Melbourne. You know, our state, my community, going through a really tough time, having someone who was misinformed from Mackay in regional Queensland uh, commentating in a way which I thought was disrespectful to Victoria Police trying to uphold the law, but also unnecessary in the circumstances and perhaps uh, gave some comfort to people who were seeking to disrupt our community at a time when we need to keep working together. In fact, Barnaby Joyce told us on breakfast a few weeks ago in response to one of George Christensen's outbursts that uh, he didn't want to, in his words, prod the bear because of the government's precarious numbers in the House of Representatives. So, so clearly politics is taking a, a role here too. Well, yeah, their comments that uh, uh, Barnaby has to explain, I can't explain them. I, my view, as I said, Michael, I, I think regional Australia does need a strong voice, but it needs to be a sensible voice. Uh, I've been very proud to represent Gippsland as Victoria National for 13 years. I'm just taking a bit of time now, the next three or four weeks, just to reflect on that and how I can serve my community going forward and how I can work uh, for the betterment of regional Australia. So, look, I, I'm sorry it's confusing. I'm sorry it doesn't make a lot of sense to some people, but I just thought uh, in all the circumstances I need to take some time away from some of my colleagues who really, I felt, are trying to push a, a hard right-wing agenda, which I wasn't comfortable with, trying to push our party in a direction that I didn't think our party should go. And I've got to the point where I thought it's probably best if I take some time away, reflect on that, and just work my way through uh, what I might want to do next on behalf of my community of Gippsland, on behalf of regional Australia more broadly, and, and I'm sorry that's caused some confusion for some people. Well, let's work that through now. What, what if in three or four weeks' time, certainly by the time Parliament gets back, uh, no action is taken by... Or the action you want is not taken by Barnaby Joyce against the likes of George Christensen. What do you do then? Well, Michael... I will have some conversations, I'm sure, over the next few weeks. Uh, I missed quite a few phone calls yesterday on my drive here to Malacuta. There's one thing about mobile phone black spots, you don't have to take the calls you don't want. So uh, I missed a few phone calls yesterday and uh, I'll get back to some of those uh, calls today and have some uh, conversations with people about how we go forward from here. But yeah, my intention right now is to take that break from the party room meetings, from the party room activities, uh, can be completely focused on the issues here in Gippsland. I'm not taking a break from Parliament. I'm, uh, doing my work here in bushfire recovery with the people of Malacuta today. I'll be having some other you know, electric duties throughout the week that I intend to fulfil. I'm, I'm not uh, uh, suggesting for a second that I'm going on holidays for four weeks. I'm just going to work in my community. I just thought it was time that I, I got away from uh, some of the things that were causing me a great deal of anxiety, I've got to admit that, uh, and I felt uh, that it was probably best to try and uh, resolve them uh, outside the room, away from 
uh, the constant, I guess, uh, input from colleagues that I was having trouble dealing with. Well, there's one of those calls from Barnaby Joyce as he tried to get in touch with you. <laughs> There were quite a few calls yesterday, Michael, and again, I say I, I went through a few mobile phone black have you, spots. No, with, in all seriousness, local member of Parliament. Have, have you spoken to Barnaby Joyce? No, I haven't. No, I did miss a call from Barnaby yesterday, but right. uh, you'd reckon the local member would fix those mobile phone black spots? Oh, you reckon he would, so you're going to call him back? <laughs> we'll have a chat at some point. Um, that's, uh, I'm sure that, that will occur in, in, in the coming days. I'll have a chat to quite a few people as we work through our differences. Again, Michael, I, I want to be a constructive uh, part of uh, public life for regional Australia and I want to be part of a team that works to achieve great things for regional Australia but that requires a degree of mutual respect and trust and common goals and a passion to work together. So they're the sort of things that I'm looking to achieve in the National Party room and I hope I can achieve that going forward. Uh, but I'll be taking this break and I'm working through some of the issues uh, with my colleagues and with my constituents here in Gippsland. Uh, let's talk, finish uh, by talking about climate change. We do know climate change caused the, uh, the dreadful black summer bushfires that uh, had a great impact on places like Malakuta where you are. We, we do know that you're a supporter of uh, Australia committing to net zero by 2050. We read this morning in the West Australian that the Prime Minister is considering not going to the Glasgow Climate Summit because of what he describes as competing demands here in Australia at the time. Should the Prime Minister, in your view, given the importance of the issue, personally go to Glasgow? Well, I haven't seen those reports, Michael, but what I would suggest is the Prime Minister is constantly having to uh, deal with competing demands, and I'd respect any decision he has to make in that regard. I'm sure Australia will, will be real represented in Glasgow, uh, but the Prime Minister has a, a lot of demands on his time, as you're well aware, from, from national security to coronavirus to climate change talks. So I would trust his judgment on whether he can attend personally or whether uh, we're represented in some other way. Darren Chester in Malakuta, thanks for joining us this morning. All this, Michael. Take care.